Today I will be reviewing every single Supercross game, 1 through 5, not a full in-depth review because that video would be probably over an hour long. Just going to be comparing a few things between each games. The last couple weeks I've been playing each and every single one of these games. Some more than others, uh, the ones that I hate probably put about 2 hours and at most on each game. But the ones I enjoyed probably put 15 to 20 hours. Now this list is all my personal opinion, my preference. So before you go in the comments and say, Oh, but Supercross 2, but Supercross 5, but Supercross 3, this game, this game, shut the hell up, it's my opinion. But uh, do feel free to, uh, you know, give me your thoughts on which games you like the most, your list. I will be uh, happy to hear that. I did do a poll about four or five days ago, and uh, here are the results. Um, whoever voted for Supercross 5, I'm convinced you guys are trolling. 31% out of 169 votes. You're fucking trolling. But anyways, let's get into uh, my list. What the fuck is this piece of shit? At number 5 in last place, it should be to no one's surprise that Supercross 4 is the worst uh, Supercross game to have been released by far. If you've watched my channel, you know I really dislike this game. I absolutely shit on this game in my review video that I made over a year ago, and my opinion on this game still stands. It is the worst Supercross game I have ever played, and I really do not enjoy playing it one bit. Now, the very few positives that this game has, I enjoy the oppo whip, free whip mechanic that this game has. It was introduced in Supercross 3 and they have kept it for the last few games and I actually think it's a good mechanic and hopefully they improve on it in the future. But in Supercross 4, it's a little bit more slow than Supercross 3. Feels a bit more clunky, but it's alright. I think first person in this game is actually pretty decent. The camera angle is nice and how it follows the bike, but I believe if you are someone who uses this camera, you're probably still going to be at a disadvantage, but it's decent. The rain looks like absolute dog shit in this game, especially compared to the first three games. Yes, you don't race in the rain all the time, but it's definitely an eyesore to look at and uh, yeah, it, it looks like dog shit, man. Dog shit. My absolute favorite thing about uh, Supercross 4 is I love racing on these uh, two-stroke DLCs that they uh, introduced, uh, especially the classic ones, the, the Honda and the Suzuki. They're really fun to ride on and they feel good. They sound pretty fucking good in my opinion. And uh, I got them on sale for like a fucking dollar. Uh, everything on, that I bought in this video was like on sale, so why not? Um, yeah, good deal. Good thing that Miles on introduced and uh, yeah, hopefully they introduce some more shit like this in the future. The graphics on the textures of the track, uh, the stock ones and the custom tracks, are pretty piss poor. I don't know what they did with them in this game, but they took a step back. Uh, they're, they're, they're on level with like fucking Supercross Encore, they're even worse than that. So I don't know what they were doing, but uh, for a game that came out in 2020, whenever it did, and for the graphics to take a step back is kind of surprising. Not the end of the world, but it but it definitely uh, fucks with your eyes a bit because you don't want to be looking at this shit while you're playing this shit. And uh, yeah, overall not very good graphics. I'm not even going to get started on the compound with this game. If you watched my review video, you know that this is definitely the worst compound to exist. Uh, it's There's really no effort put into it, so let's just get past that. The on-ground physics in this game, they're okay. They're not uh, that terrible, but when you compare them to the first few Supercross games or the other MXGP games, they're not very good. It does feel a little bit clunky, very slippery in the corners and on the straights. The bike almost feels like it's glued to the ground. You're uh, not getting too much air in this game, and it feels very heavy. I don't really want to spend too much more time on this garbage, so uh, yeah, Supercross 4 is the worst Supercross game to have ever been made. Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt! You make me sick, you big baby! So coming in at number four, we have Supercross 5. This one was actually really hard to decide between Supercross 4 and 5. 
these games have identical physics and uh, they're very very similar the only few things that separate this from supercross 4 is the custom helmet editor and um, I think the fact that you can change the field of view on your first person but other than that these games are so similar I couldn't tell the difference I played Supercross 5 for a little bit hopped on Supercross 4 right away vice versa back and forth and they felt identical very similar and uh, yeah so these games are pretty much the exact same but the only reason why I put this game ahead of Supercross 4 is the custom helmet editor and uh, that's really all I have to say uh, everything I said about Supercross 4 pretty much applies to this it's got a horrible compound first person's pretty decent bike sounds are the same the in-air physics are identical to Supercross 4 same thing with the on ground so everything I said about Supercross 4 it applies to Supercross 5 track editor is horrible the models are shit especially the tabletop over under jump thing but the one thing I really dislike about Supercross 5 is the AI. They're quick in this game, but they cheat. They come to a complete stop instantly, hug the inside, get a speed boost, and pull away. I think that's one of the main reasons why I stopped playing this game after about 20 hours is because the AI just made it really not fun to play the game, and multiplayer is dead on day one. Again, the rain in this game looks pretty bad compared to the first three games. Yes, you can have a little bit of fun with this, but Overall, I think this game's a waste of money. If you like 4, you're gonna like 5. If you hate 4, you're gonna hate 5. Yeah, moving on. Oh fuck yeah, I'm hard as a rock. Now every game from here on forward could easily be switched around. They're all fantastic games. I enjoyed my time coming back and playing them. But I think the number 3 spot is the right one for Supercross 1. In my opinion, this game still has the best graphics. It still looks the most polished, which is kind of sad when you compare this to Supercross 4 and 5 because those games look like shit. But this game has a very good compound, it is a DLC in this game, but it's very cheap and I think the tracks are very well designed and it's very fun. This game is insanely fast and you notice that on the compound, but even on the stock tracks you notice how quick and how fast this game really is. That's one reason why it stands out from the rest of the other ones is just how fast it is. The other ones can often feel slow and clunky at times. This one is very loose and fast. Supercross 1 is probably the most uh, casual friendly game out there. It's not hard to pick up at all. The physics are very easy to work with. The whips and scrubs are very simple, but I think the whips and scrubs are actually the best in Supercross 1. The scrubs feel nice and they look fantastic. The whips actually aren't that great, but the scrubs are nice. I believe this game has the second best track editor, arguably the best, which is again sad because it's the first game that came out, so you'd think every single one after this would be at least a little bit better. Supercross 3, 4, and 5 don't have the best track editors. The first two games are actually uh, leaps and bounds ahead of those ones, mainly for the fact that you can flip any jump in the game backwards, and all of the models are built fairly well, especially compared to 3, 4, and 5. I do remember this game had the worst multiplayer in terms of connection bugs and, and just the other people flying around glitching everywhere hay bales flying across the map that kind of thing the connection was pretty bad so that's the only really thing that's knocking this game down a little bit the whoops are also very non-existent they're basically braking bumps on all the tracks and you will probably never crash in them they're pretty small in this game and that's the one uh thing that all the other supercross games improved on was the whoops Holy fuck, the cereal's good. I really had to sit and think about these next three options because Supercross 1, 2, and 3 are very spectacular games. They're all very different and very unique. And that's one of the main reasons why they are ahead of 4 and 5 is because 4 and 5 have shitty physics and they didn't change much at all. The only two negative things I can really think of about this game are the bike sounds are the worst in the series. They have a weird rev limiter that I just don't know what went wrong, but after coming back and playing it, you really noticed it, and once you notice it, you can't unnotice it, it kind of fucks with your mind. And the last thing that I really dislike about this game is the track editor. Uh, the first two games had great track editors, 
This game took a bit of a step back because the models of the jumps were very weird. The texture on the track looked a bit off and the over under tabletop jump, it looked very off and I don't know why they ever changed it because it was good in the first two games. The back end can kind of slip out on you coming out of corners, but everywhere else you have a pretty good amount of traction, way more than four and five. This was the first Supercross game to kind of free the whip and kind of have a bit of a oppa whip going on. There's still the, the can to scrub animations and it looks all right in this game. I feel okay, but I really love throwing the oppa whip and whip in this game. It has a nice flow to it. And the bike also feels very, very light. You can throw this bitch around like Kimmy Granger. It's pretty ridiculous. This game was my absolute baby. I did a little bit of competitive when this game first came out. On the PS4, I raced against Axis a couple times and McChicken. Those guys kind of have a bit of a name for themselves on YouTube as well. I had some good memories on this game. I don't really have too much negative things to say about it. Actually, the last negative thing I have to say about Supercross 3, first person, it's kind of gay. It's actually very gay. It's pretty zoomed in and the way it follows your bike around corners, it's just not it. If it was zoomed out a bit more, it might have more potential. But I just don't like it and I never have. I think it's probably the worst in the series. Uh, it's just not good. So uh, yeah, first person sucks. This game also introduced being able to ride for factory teams. It was the first Supercross game to do that, but not the first milestone game. I love how the whoops were done in this game. They're not too tough, but not too easy. You can absolutely fly through them or you can fuck them up pretty easily as well. I wasn't a huge fan of how they did the sand in this game on the uh, custom tracks. I think it looks pretty good, but it feels a bit too slippery in my opinion. Overall, man, this game is just so fun. I got it on sale for like $5, so that was pretty cool. It has a great compound, a good amount of supercross tracks, and an okay motocross track. I absolutely love the rain in this game. I think it looks spectacular. The first three Supercross games got the rain just right, especially number two and three. This game also introduced the Legends DLC and the classic Anaheim track, which was very fucking cool. The bike sounds are awesome for the old two-stroke, and it's just it's cool to have James Stewart, Ricky Johnson, Grant Langston, and uh, I think Tim Ferry was also in there, and for some reason Davey Millsaps. But yeah, this was a very cool DLC and uh, I think they definitely need to bring more stuff like this in the future. I believe they did in Supercross uh, 5, but that game is kind of fucking poo-poo. Anyways though, this game had some awesome DLC. I got all of it on sale for like under $5 for everything, so I lucked out. This is the greatest Supercross game to have been made yet. I don't care what anybody says. This is the game that I've had the most fun on coming back to it. And it's the game that I had the most fun on when it came out. Supercross 2 is probably the only uh, milestone game that I played throughout the entire year and didn't really get bored of it. This was the first game that I tried my hand at league racing. I think I did like two or three races. I ended up getting second in my first one then winning the next one and fun fact it was on this track in the video san diego this is my favorite track in the game i love the layout and the whoops are fucking monstrous on this track as you saw i went over the bars and ate shit and died so yeah why is this game better than all the other ones you may ask well in my opinion supercross 2 has the best track editor it introduced sand yes you can't put in sand on every single object but that's all right because you only really need it in the turns and on maybe a couple rollers, which is what you can do in this game. I also think the sand handles the best on Supercross 2. I think Supercross 2 has the best whip animation and the best feeling whip. The bike sounds are decent, and Supercross 2 also has the best career. Even coming back and playing it, I still enjoy it quite a bit. I did a full 250 career and a full 450 career. I spent about 15 to 20 hours replaying this game. That's how much I enjoyed it and how much fun I had coming back and playing it. I believe this was the first game to introduce some sort of skill system or training system in the career mode. It's not too difficult, it's actually kind of decent, there's a few different training options. And you actually get to pick your schedule throughout the week, which is very cool. They haven't brought this system back, which I'm kind of disappointed in, because you could either meet the press, get a promotional day, or train, and have a couple rest days. Supercross 2 also is arguably the best looking game that Milestone has made right next to Supercross 1. 
the rain looks fucking orgasmic in this game. Yes, you only race on it once in a while in the rain, but just look how good it is, especially on the custom tracks, it's, it's insane. In my opinion, Supercross 2 has the best first person, even though I'm not a first person kind of guy. Once in a while, I like to ride in first person just because it changes the game up a bit and it makes it feel a bit less stale. But me personally, I think it's the best that we've had in all the Supercross games. And another one is Supercross 2, in my opinion, has the best DLC that we have had, right behind Supercross 3. Yes, Supercross 3 had the awesome Cosmetic Legends packs, but I think Supercross 2 takes the win with the Coliseum DLC and the Compound 2 DLC. Also, the Monster Cup is probably the best in this game as well. And another one, this game has the best Daytona out of all the Supercross games. In every other Supercross game, Daytona is pretty dog shit, but in SX2, it's not too bad. So that's my uh, tier list or ranking system for all the Supercross games. Let me know what you think down below of my list. Leave your list down below because I'm curious to see what you guys think. I really had a hard time deciding between Supercross 1, 2, and 3, but Supercross 4 and 5, it was a no-brainer that those two were by far the worst. And who knows, maybe Supercross 6 can uh, take the podium or the top step as the worst Supercross game once it comes out. If I even buy it, I'm not too sure yet. But uh, yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, take care.